everybody welcome back to our little homestead i want to take you guys along with me today for our final harvest from our summer garden i know i've been saying for a while that we are getting some of our final things out of the garden but this really was the final harvest of the season and that is getting our potatoes out potatoes are usually one of the last things to come ready in your garden especially you know if you plant them in your summer garden of course if you get them in in springtime then they'll actually be one of the first things to come out but in our case we put these in in summertime so they were one of the last things to come ready so we are just digging our potatoes today we had four rows and we were really excited to see what we got out of these as you all know this is our first year on this new property and the garden is definitely a work in progress as you can see just like the tomato bed the weeds are kind of overtaking everything we are still kind of learning that as we go but I don't think this was too bad of a harvest for our first year and for this ground really not being that great yet at all. So we're just digging these up and stick around for the next part of this as well. I'm going to take you along for making the best, in my opinion, potato soup ever. So let's just get these potatoes dug up so that we can make that potato soup. If you plan on storing your potatoes long term, it's a really good idea to let them cure in the sunlight. And basically all that is is just letting them set in the sunlight on a nice warm day for about 30 minutes on one side, turn them over and let them set for about 30 minutes on the other side. That's just gonna toughen the skins up and make them a little better for long term storage. Alright, so let's move on to making this delicious creamy potato soup. I had a lot of little potatoes from the garden and so I'm using several, but if you have just medium sized potatoes or bigger potatoes, then about five would be perfect for this recipe. You'll want to make sure that the skins are nice and clean because we will not be taking the skins off for this potato soup. So we're just going to wash up those potatoes. I'm also going to grab three stalks of celery from the fridge and I'm going to wash those and then I'm gonna grab a medium onion and I'm gonna start dicing this onion and celery into really fine pieces and then adding it to a medium stock pot. We're gonna to need to simmer these for a little bit before we add the potatoes because they will take a little longer to soften. So let's just get those onions and celery into that stock pot with about five or six cups of water and get that over medium heat and let that start simmering until those veggies are softened up. And now we can move on to the potatoes. Just like the onion and the celery, we're gonna be chopping these up into pretty small pieces. I would say no bigger than one centimeter by one centimeter would be really good for this. And then we're gonna go ahead and just add these to that pot of simmering water that already has the onions and celery in it. And now we need to get these softened up. So let's add those. And we're gonna let that simmer for, I don't know, I would say about another, 15 minutes or so until those potato pieces are softened up as well and then we will get to finishing the soup. All right, so now we need to get a larger stock pot and we're going to add about two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil and put that over medium heat. Let that get all nice and melted. And then we're gonna be whisking in one third of a cup of flour. Or sometimes I've used a half cup, it depends. If you like your potato soup a little bit on the thinner side, go for the third cup. If you like it a little on the thicker side, go for the half cup. It's just whatever your preference is. And we're gonna make like a roux with that. We're gonna combine that flour and that butter and olive oil until we have a crumbly little mixture in 
that stock pot and then we're going to be adding in one and a half cups of chicken bone broth. Now you can use store-bought bone broth if that's what you have, if you have homemade that's perfect, whatever you have is fine. And we're going to mix that together until we get like a gravy consistency. And then we will be adding in all of those simmering veggies along with all of that water that was already in that medium stock pot and mixing all of that together really, really well until it is incorporated. And then we have a few final touches to get this soup ready to eat. So now let's go ahead and add in some pepper to taste as well as salt. I use two teaspoons of salt. If you are using store-bought bone broth, be sure to check if there is already salt added to that because if there is, then the two teaspoons might be a little bit too much salt for this recipe. If not, go ahead and add in those two teaspoons of salt. And then we're gonna add in one cup of milk and some parsley. I like to do about a tablespoon, a good bit. And then after that, we are going to finally add in about a third cup of heavy cream. This is what really makes this recipe delicious and so, so creamy. So let's get all of that added in and then we still have a couple final steps to get this ready. Okay, so that final step that I was talking about is to pulse this with an immersion blender just to thicken it up a little bit. You definitely still want some big pieces of potato in the soup. We do not want to blend this all the way, but you'll want it to be a little blended. If you don't have an immersion blender, you could remove a third of the soup, run it through a regular blender, and then add it back in. Either way would work fine. But at this point, this is ready. Let's just serve this up. I love to top it with some crumbled bacon, some shredded cheese, and some sour cream. That is really, really yummy. And just one final note, I actually love this soup even more when it sets in the fridge for a few hours and then is reheated and served like that. I don't know why, but it gets so much creamier and so much more delicious and thick. So give that a try, and if you have extras, trust me, the leftovers are just as good. Um, all right, I hope you all enjoyed coming along with us for a potato harvest and following along with this yummy, yummy fall-inspired recipe. Um, be sure to give this video a like and a comment, and we would love it if you would decide to subscribe and follow our journey. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I will see you all next week.